The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Yes, it is. It's time to get in the ring with DJ D. Kooks and Beast Mike. How you doing, Beast Mike? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it's a little rainy here in State College, but uh, it's it's nice weather, and it's a really good time of the year as a June with with uh, all the sports stuff that's happening, and obviously July coming up with uh, with G1 coming up. We're obviously, going to talk about that later on. This is a good time of the year. It's a good time. OJ Simpson now has Twitter. And he came, he struck with a vengeance on, on his first tweet. The line, I got a lot of getting even to do. I got some getting even to do. That line, I think, broke the internet and broke a whole lot of people's souls and spirits. Yep. <laughs> it, it's, I, I, was, I had to fall back and pause. Like, wait a minute. It, it's, hilarious. it's hilarious that he said that. And he said it on camera. But, like, wait. I don't think that's the image you want. I don't think that's the image you want it's to send to people. After all the stuff you've been through. <laughs> no, after all you've been through? Come on now, OJ. We all know. He doesn't care, though. He, he skated away. So, but yeah, it, it's it's quite a thing. It, it's, that, it's basically broken the internet. And basically, now you have people, oh, are they going to, are you going to follow him on Twitter? Or are you trying to avoid him at all costs on Twitter? So it's quite a thing. Yes. Yes, and will the Lakers get an Anthony Davis? This is our little sports update. <laughs> Lakers getting Anthony Davis, and this is twofold. For the Lakers, it is a, okay, it's win-now mode. It's it's time to go, it's go time. Now, Rob Palenka probably may have screwed up the cap. They're still going to have to get rid of a bunch of people, and they're literally trying to buy second-round picks just because they'll have nothing left after LeBron, Davis and Kuz- LeBron Anthony Davis, and Kuzma. But... It's a so he probably screwed up the cap there. So that's one thing. Even though LeBron, Kuzma, and Anthony Davis, that three man team, is, that three man unit is going to be really, really good. Kuzma is your third option is good. Player. That's hilarious. That's the other problem here. They won't be able to truly afford another max unless they shed pretty much every other salary worth noting on the team, not named LeBron, Davis, or Kuzma. That's the other part here. And. So Rob Lincoln may have screwed that up in that sense. But on the Wallens' side, it's an outstanding haul, and here's why. You're talking, they're going to have control of the Lakers pretty much four out of the next five years in terms of drafting. It's not just the three picks that they're going to get outright. It's the fact that they'll be able to also swap with the Lakers in two of the five the next five years. And then they get the other, and then they get the other three outright, including the fourth pick, which they're, they're trying to flip to get more stuff uh, tomorrow tonight for the draft. So it, it's quite a deal for New Orleans, an excellent deal because now you've got Zion, you got a squad, a young, a young talented squad around him, and you're going to be able to build still going forward because you got the fourth pick, which you can flip to something for something else. So it's a really, it's quite a deal. For both sides. Uh, I really like it from New Orleans. Even though they didn't get Kuzma. I was shocked they didn't get Kyle Kuzma. But it's a really good deal for both sides. Especially the Pelicans. Right. And then congratulations to Toronto. Congratulations to the Raptors for their first title. And the St. Louis Blues as well for their first title. Both cities had really good parades. Toronto's especially with that that massive amount of people. (laughs) <laughs> the, the, and Kawhi basically getting the last laugh in a literal sense, mocking his own laugh, which which basically broke the internet when he did it initially. So I thought that that was a good look. Uh, there, we obviously got the, uh, the St. Louis Blues and the Toronto Raptors with the Stanley Cups, uh, with, with the with the Stanley Cup and NBA Finals, respectively. St. Louis winning the Stanley Cup and, and obviously playing Gloria throughout the – they're going to play Gloria all summer in the Gateway City over in yeah. St. Louis. Gloria! Uh, Gloria! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to hear nothing but that in St. Louis. They finally have a Stanley Cup to call their own. Ryan O'Reilly won the Conn Smythe. I had no issue with uh, Ryan O'Reilly winning it. 
Uh, I could argue Jordan Bennington with the way he played uh, in these playoffs, but I can understand Kyle Ryan with the way he played in the Stanley Cup Finals, so I, I completely understand why. All the F-bombs that the Blues dropped, too. It's a hilarious video online. Yes, uh, it's been released, the video. So, uh, somebody screaming, oh, we already have the explicit tag on this. So, fuck! Yeah. Fuck yeah! <laughs> it, it's so good. It's so good. And, like, and, and Doc and like, having to apologize. Like, yeah, yeah, they won their first Stanley Cup. We don't care. <laughs> no, yeah, no, we're cool. No, we're cool. I mean, nothing's going to top the summer of Ovi from last year. I don't know if there's a St. Louis Blue that could possibly do what Alex Ovechkin did last year in terms of the – that's the greatest celebration summer I think we've ever seen in sports. But there are some Blues that can give it a shot. I think Ryan O'Reilly can give it a shot. There's several Blues that may have a shot to do what Ovi did last year, but I don't oh. think anything's going to top Alex Ovechkin's sum- the summer of Ovi that was last year with him celebrating with the Cup. I don't think anything's going to top that. Let's get to some wrestling. But first, do you have any nightclub moments, Mike? Let's see. So... Not in its traditional sense. There is a NyQuil moment, but it's actually playing defense against the NyQuil. You may have seen that Tyson Fury had a fight last week, right? And Tyson Fury, he won the fight in two rounds. It was the second round TKO, so it was no big deal that uh, Tyson Fury was that dominant because we expect it out of him. He's one of the best heavyweights in the world. But the part that gets me is not the fact that he gave out the NyQuil, because he really didn't knock out his opponent, even though he probably could have had the referee kept it going. The thing was that he avoided the NyQuil. He avoided, yes. Tom, he avoided Tom Schwartz basically playing defense like he was in the Matrix. As, as he was, as he was, like, he was like, no, 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 as, as I'm dodging my head. He, he, yeah, that's literally what he did. Like, like, Schwartz had four straight opportunities to hit him clean in the jaw. And he completely evaded all four of them and then smiled us after he did it. <laughs> the disrespect of, of Tyson Fury basically saying, you, have, you are not worthy of being in the ring with me, which he wasn't. But it, the fact that he did it right to his face. And then Schwartz tried to play defense during the fight. He tried his hardest to play defense. And even then, uh, like, like Fury was getting nothing. It was getting nothing but clean shots in on him. The referee probably did the right thing by stopping the fight as soon as he did because it would it probably would have gotten a whole lot worse. So it's a night one moment of the week, but it's, in, in a sense, it's him evading. It's Tyson Fury evading the Nyquil as opposed to giving it out. So that's your night one moment of the week, sponsored by PowerSlam.tv. <laughs> <laughs> you see a uh, promo code Social Suplex on the, and we'll have more information on that when we take our break. So where do you want to start this week in terms of uh, actual wrestling? Oh, oh, you know where I want to start. Yep. So if you can tell the D-Cooks has been beaming, it has nothing to do with Baron Corbin not winning the Universal Championship. This it actually <laughs> has something to do with it because Baron Corbin did not win the Universal Championship, even though he might have the chance of Sunday. But this is about something different and not WWE. This is actually about the G1 blocks. Um, I I looked at Block A and realized I, I'm I thought oh th- this this has to be fake this has to be fake there's no way that all this talent is in Block A. You could confirm that all this talent is in Block A and Block B is not too shabby either. All right, let's let's talk about it. Who, who's who's in Block A for the people who may not know? Kazuchika Okada, Zack Saber Jr., Hiroshi Tanahashi, Kota Ibushi, Evil. Sonata, Bad Luck Fale, Lance Archer, Will Ospreay, and Kenta. Yes, that Kenta, a.k.a. Adele Watami, a.k.a. Kenta again. He won it back in G1. He's back in G1. No, this is his first G1. This is his first G1, yeah, this is his first G1, you're right. I see a whole lot of flash. There's a whole lot of style. There's a whole lot of substance. This block A is going to be so good. You got my favorite match from a couple years ago, which was the WrestleMania weekend that had Shinsuke and Sami Zayn. It was the night before when, when Sabre and Osprey had my favorite match of that year. They're, gonna, they're, in block one, they're in block A. I'm all for this block. This is such a good block. There's so many good combinations here. Me either. You just, have, you just have men in the B block. B you block have is physical, yes. Tetsuya Naito. You have Tomohiro Ishii, 
Juice Robinson, Yano, Toru, Toriano, um, Hiroki Goto, Jay White, Jeff Cobb, Shingo Tagagi, Taichi, and John frickin' Moxley. This is a physical... Whoever's gonna win Block B is gonna earn it. This is a physical beat em up type of block where you're gonna come out with some lumps if you win Block B. What are some of the combinations you're looking at? Like, what, what are the three... Well, give me the three matches you're looking forward to in Block A and the three you're looking forward to in Block B. Well, I swear for the story, Don Hashi. Okay. The last night in the B block, A block, it's going to be Hiroshi Zanahashi versus Will Ospreay, August 10th. Mm. Also, I'm looking at Shingo versus Ishii. Okay, Shingo Ishii, that's your first in block B. Okay. Block B, that's going to be nuts. That's going to be nuts. And Ishii Moxley. In Cork and mm. Hall. That's going to be freaking phenomenal. No, I'm saying you, you're three, the three you're looking forward to in block A and the three you're looking forward to in block B. You could, you could give me three in each block. Um, so I give you two in block B. You gave me two in block B and one in block A. Also in block A, I'll go block A again. <laughs> well, Osprey versus Kenta. Okay. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Kenta. The last night in Budokan. Mm. But no, I say block I in Budokan, and then the final block B match. It has to be freaking Ishii and Ito because yearly yeah. they have match. They have classics. The internet. <laughs> they have they have classics with each other. Okay, I'm looking at in block A matches. I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to seeing Kenta and Okada. I want to. I want to see what Kenta can do against Okada, as Kenta's obviously been back in in, uh, in New Japan for a few months now. But I don't think he, he hasn't really seen. I don't think he really saw Okada at peak of powers. Okada, I, I need to see that. That's gonna be dope. Osprey and Bushi running it back from earlier this year, and that's gonna be in Kurgan Hall. Uh, that's Os- gonna be nuts. Yes, Os- Osprey and Bushi running it back is gonna be great. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to Tanahashi and Saber. Uh, I mean, that's that's that third match as well is also going to be highly entertaining. Uh, I think it's, I know Saber has kind of struggled in, in G one. It's like he hasn't really built up as much momentum as I thought he would by now. But I think I think Saber can have a good G another a good G one this year uh, like by the standards I think he could get to. But I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. In Block B, I'm a Cobb guy. Cobb and Ishii, two big dudes, basically beating each other up. I'm yep. all for it. I'm all for that. I'm all for Naito versus Moxley. With, with the, yeah. the, the psychology of Naito and Moxley, I think is going to really work. Charisma. And, yeah, the charisma aspect that's going to be oozing with charisma. Yes, and that, that that's why I'm looking forward to that one. And Shingo, Shingo and Moxley is another one I'm looking at too. I, I oh, really the physicality. And- Okay, we talked about it with Block B at, at the top. Physicality. There's a whole lot of it here. And Shingo and Moxley are two dudes who, who could get into a brawl, and it's, it's nothing to them. So I'm, I'm all for also, Shingo and Moxley, too. I'm also looking at the last B Block night in Budokan. Shingo versus Hiroki Goto. Mm. Uh, yes. Just men beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. Just, just, it, it's just glorious G1 time. This is the, this looks like the most depth we've seen in a G one. I, I think po- and potentially ever. This looks like the most depth, but you can make a case for at least four dudes in each block that can actually win it. At least four, and possibly more than that in, in block A. Right. Um. So, what's your early feeling? What's your final? And what's your... Mm. All right, so, so I'm thinking, okay, Okada's a champion. So obviously Okada's not going to... Uh, in theory, I wouldn't think he'd win it. But I do think he has a run. Ooh, Block B. You know what? I'm going to go Osprey to make Block A's final. And in Block B... Hmm. 
I'm gonna go Ooh, Osprey B versus. I still think I'm gonna go Moxley. I think Juice Robinson. Oh, I don't win it two years ago. Uh, I, think he, I think Juice Robinson has a very. I think Naito wins he, again. Really you think Naito wins again? Okay. Um, I think there's a story there. He lost two years at the, two, two years ago at the Tokyo Dome. Right. I think Naito the, the redemption tour for Naito. And I think. Block B will be Block A will have Kota Bushi coming out because I mean, I you really need okay. a big time match. The because the G one finals are basically already sold out. Mm-hmm. So, and you've done Naito Bushi a bunch of times, and every time it's magic except for when they decide to German suplex each other off the apron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 true. We we did talk about that. Uh, so Osprey and Tagagi, Osprey and Shingo running the back in the final would be great. That would be great, but not gonna happen. I guess Jay White um, coming out of Block B. I can see because we're we're getting we're gonna get a surprise in one of the two blocks. I can see Jay White coming out Block B, so I'll go Osprey Jay White and and, and Osprey winning. I don't think Osprey's winning. Okay. I'm glad that they're all in on Will Ospreay. Yeah, that's a, that's a thought. He's the junior champ. You can't yeah. have him win the G1 while he's the junior champ. Well, I would think he would lose the title at some point soon. Yeah, but you don't want your G1 winner losing the junior title. Well, what would be the point of him having both championships? But no. I can see, I can, but no. I can see your point. You would have to relinquish the title. I can see your point. Like, you're not going to have Will Ospreay lose when he's the G1 champion. That's a fair you, point. You get what I'm saying here? I do get what you're saying. I do, I do think that's a, that's a fair uh, assessment. The only other thought would have been Shingo and Osprey running it back. But then the loser would have to, the loser would have to be the, the, the junior champion, which, and obviously Osprey just won Best of Super Junior. So that, that'd, be, that'd be a little hard to figure. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I think it'd be, I think it's fair to Osprey. I think it'd be fair for Osprey to move up into the heavyweight category. I think is what I'm saying. I think that's yeah. I I, I understand what you're saying, but but th- this is basically Will Osprey's heavyweight debut. He's going to take a lot of outs. Understandable. Yeah, so that's, that's a fair point. Matches. Don't get me fucking wrong. <laughs> Do you think Osprey will do what basically was saved to Osprey to cement his wrestler of the year case? Which I'm sure, they, which yeah, he, he can certainly well, do Osprey that. Osprey is my wrestler of the year right now. It's not even close. Yeah, both in both categories, both in most outstanding and who says he, he's put out classics this year. Wow. He absolutely has the classic with the Bushi, the classic with Shingo. He, he's put out some. Some, some jet, he's put out fire this year. Osprey has, and that, yeah, uh, it's it would be a strike while the iron is hot time for Osprey if, if they're gonna ride him uh to the end here. But I, I do get what you're saying that he, that he like Saber before him was so Saber got into the, the I was talking about it with Saber where he been a few G1s in, but Saber took a whole lot of lumps in them. So I, I can see what you're saying. I, I, I can understand what you're, what you're getting at. Lumps. Um, I think he gets the Tanahashi win the last night, though. Mm. I think he'll play spoiler to Tanahashi. Okay. That's Will Ospreay's big moment where he's like cemented as a heavyweight. He beats Tanahashi. Mm. I'm just looking at the potential. There are two potential stories you can tell. You can strike while the iron is hot with Kota Ibushi. But yeah, the know. problem with Kota Ibushi is you're having him face Okada the last night of the G1. They're in the same block as Okada. Or you do the Naito Okada story and have Naito win at Wrestle Kingdom one of the two nights. That's a fair have- thought. You have, you have Naito and Okada in the final. Naito wins and then Naito beats him in the rematch. Uh, uh, that's a, that's, that, makes, that makes sense. That makes <laughs> looking sense, yes. And it's actually refreshing to talk about booking <laughs> rather than in WWE where nothing really fucking happens. <laughs> Where a whole lot doesn't make I sense. Tokyo Dome up twice. One of them, like a semi main event for one of them, is going to be Liger's last match. That'd be good. That would work. 
Who would you have Liger run? Who would you have Liger have his last match against? Suzuki. I really think mm. they're going with that program anyway, and the fans are yearning to see it. And I think that's a. I don't think it's a dome main event worthy, but I think it's semi main event worthy. Yeah, if it went on second or third to last, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate on it. Yeah, if it went on second or third to last, I wouldn't hate on that. I do think Wagner Suzuki, the way they're building it, is either a G one final match mm-hmm. because Suzuki's not in the tournament, or or a Russell Kingdom match. I'll have to slow play it, but I think it's it's possible. You can slow play it with tag matches and 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 tease extended interactions, I suppose. With uh, yeah, with that's what they've been doing anyway. So yeah, that's okay. You'd have to severely slow play it, but I think it, it's doable. Yeah, it's doable. Make the yearn really yearning, for right? Me, I think I could see Moxley coming out B if. You're you're having Kota Ibushi win. Mox is interesting. Moxley's in an interesting position because of the whole AEW stuff. Right, which why I didn't think Moxley. I do think Moxley will win his share of matches, but I don't think Moxley can will get to the end because of the whole AEW things. And he's got a whole lot coming in AEW, I'm sure. Right, and they're being frenemies. Because they, they AEW basically blocked Moxley from wrestling on the Dallas show mm-hmm. in a tag. But they're allowing him to, to be in this tournament here, which obviously gains them exposure, too. But, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's going to be – that's going to be interesting how they play this, AEW and, uh, and New Japan. That's going to be an interesting dynamic of how they play this going forward. Where if AEW really hits the continues their momentum, oh, and by the way, the next the next uh, big showing, the next pay per view, selling out in fifteen minutes, incredible stuff. Oh, uh, wow. right. yep. All out, all out selling out in fifteen minutes. That's that's incredible stuff right there. And their so, next show is going to be free on BR Live. Good deal. That's 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 a good move. Get, get the numbers up. You, you can get a whole, you're going to get millions of viewers. To see what AEW is about, it, it keeps the momentum going. It's a smart business decision. Good business. Yes. So that's on June 29th. We'll preview that next week. Um, but the G1 is really exciting. Definitely, definitely is. Um, let's go to WWE. <laughs> let's do this. Preview stomping grounds. Okay. Um and do and, like the storylines. Yeah, I'll try to tie. I'll try to tie in all the stuff from the story. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. So, because, that, so stopping grounds. It's a Sunday. This Sunday is yep. So obviously two weeks after the uh, the whatever that was in, in Jeddah with a uh, with Super Showdown, but stopping grounds is this Sunday. So we're gonna we're gonna go about it a little bit differently to kind of speed this up with WWE. And and make this a whole lot simpler. First thing on the totem pole, we got the, the cruiserweight championship triple threat match between the champion Tony Nese versus Drew Gulag and Akira Tozawa. This match was set up a couple weeks ago. Well, it was set up officially last week uh, by Drake Maverick on Tuesday, uh, right before he won the twenty four seven championship and is off to his wedding. Uh, it's a real thing. He actually is getting married. Uh, so Gul- so Maverick set up the triple threat between Tozawa. And after a great fatal four-way where Tozawa and Gulag basically pinned each other after a superplex by Gulag. So now it's set up as a triple threat. I still think Nice retains. I think Nice will retain by pinning Gulag, but I think it's going to be a, a good triple threat match with a lot of good styles involved with the three of them. But I'm going to go Nice to retain. Next up, we have here... Retain. Yeah. Sorry? You, you okay. got these two. Okay. Next up, we have... With uh, Daniel Bryan and Rowan versus Heavy Machinery for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. They're doing what I wanted them to do with the SmackDown titles. I like that they're building this up a little, maybe a little too soon. I wish they would have waited a a month for for Extreme Rules in Philly. But I like what they're doing here. Heavy Machinery has been productive. They beat up the B team on Thursday. Or no, not Thursday. On Tuesday. This is Thursday. On Tuesday on SmackDown. And and handled theirs. B team's getting a whole lot of momentum. 
I still think it's a tad too soon. Yes, Heavy Machinery should be the team that beats Brian and Rowan, but not now. I think Brian and Rowan will retain the titles. I think Brian and Rowan will retain as well. I think I think that's a that's a it's a solid match. Dan Bryan did have a good match with Seth Rollins to close Raw, though. That was, at least there, there was also that. Next up, we're going to go New Day, which is Woods, and uh, Big E versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, I'm shocked that neither of these teams are involved in the tag team title picture on Raw or SmackDown, quite honestly. Uh, New Day, in their case, on SmackDown, and, and Owens and Zayn, I guess, on, I guess on SmackDown as well. But obviously these two teams have been feuding because Zayn and Owens have gone after Kofi in WWE Championship. Obviously New Day is doing what they can to make sure that the boy is straight. Too much momentum for New Day. I think uh, New Day will, will get us done. Owens and Ian Woods will, will handle the, theirs against Zayn and Owens. Yeah, I think, I think New Day gets it done. Ricochet won a Fatal Five Way on Raw, which is actually productive. All five guys, all the all five guys getting some shots in Elias at the Rollins did what he did. We'll get to Rollins later. Uh, Ricochet won a fatal five way elimination match where basically Lashley and Cesaro eliminated Strowman. Ricochet hitting him with the six thirty to win it, and then Ricochet pinned the Miz to win the match itself. Ricochet versus Samoa Joe for the United States Championship. I think it's time for a change. Ricochet, I think, upsets Samoa Joe and wins the title. I think Joe. I think it's time for Joe to get into the Universal Championship picture. I could care less. Mm. It, it see they, they they've kind of gone fifty fifty booking with Ricochet. I don't like it. I think they they have to start pushing Ricochet now if you're going to really get the be- the best out of him. So I'm going to go Ricochet to win the United States Championship, and then Joe basically immediately goes to the Universal Championship picture. I'm looking. At, I, I'm I'm hoping it's Joe Rollins at SummerSlam. <laughs> honestly. Now, speaking of Seth Rollins, he faces Baron Corbin for the Universal Championship. Basically, Seth Rollins' this week was served as basically being Jason Voorhees. Uh, you may remember Jason Voorhees is the hack and slasher who would basically run up from behind people and beat up and basically kill people with machetes. Well, Rollins' weapon of choice was a steel chair. His first victim was Elias. This continued pretty much all night on Raw where he beat up EC3, he beat up Eric Young, he got to Corbin with a chair. And then he would do the same with the B team. Now, Corbin did get the drop on Rollins after Rollins beat Daniel Bryan on Raw by hit, by basically returning the favor and then hitting him with the EOD to close the show. But Rollins versus Corbin, and this time Corbin gets to pick the ref. And that's why Rollins did what he did. Basically, anyone who considered being the ref for the, for the match, Rollins basically destroyed uh, with, the, with a chair. Whoever Corbin gets to be the ref, I don't think it'll matter. Ultimately, I think Rollins will retain. I think Rollins will retain it. Baron Corbin wins. That I rant, will... that, that, that rant that could have happened before after Super Showdown, it'll come next week. So if you're still cheering for that rant, <laughs> cheer for Corbin. We know it's coming if Corbin wins. <laughs> now we get to the, now I'll get to the ladies. First off, I don't think I have the energy to like <laughs> to, to do it. To do it, <laughs> I, I'm like fuck. I, I could care less about this company. Well, considering you're looking so forward to G1 basically taking over July and, all, and, and mid-August, it's the six weeks of G1, which is going to be pretty much the, the best part of wrestling summer, not named uh, All Out and potentially SummerSlam. I can see what you're saying. Now we get to, I'll get to the ladies now. G1 we got better than SummerSlam. What's up? The G1 will definitely be better than SummerSlam. It's looking like it. It really is. SummerSlam is going to have to be something. Like it. it will be. <laughs> I mean, which night of G1? I mean, are we talking to G1 final? Or are we talking to the G1 tournament as a whole? Absolutely. That, yeah, I agree G1 there. But is, is a whole. I'm like, are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, G, yeah, G1 as a whole. Yeah, I agree. But it's, I wonder what will be the best night of G1 will be the question. Um, they're going to have a, a, like a night of the year somewhere. It's just a matter of what, mat, what night it is. So the ladies now for both the, the women's championships. Becky Lynch versus Lacey Evans. They continue to basically kind of do the same stuff over and over again. Well, when one woman talks and the other woman is okay. starts beat, it, it's it, it's gotten pretty stale. I think this rivalry does have to end. I think ultimately it will end with Becky retaining. Lacey's still, I think, a little too soon to win the women's championship. Lacey's very productive to me, but I think a little bit too soon to be champion. So I think Becky will retain again. Now to the women, now to the SmackDown side, which is at least somewhat interesting. 
with Bailey and Alexa. And Alexa and Nikki Cross had a chance to win the, the, the women's tag titles on Raw. The Iconics actually defended them on TV for once. But if the Iconics retained, they're going to face Asuka and Kyrie Sane uh, next week when SmackDown's in Japan, which is pretty much all but saying Kyrie and Asuka are going to win the titles. Um, Thank fucking God. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's time to get actual, yeah, which is, I think this is perfectly fine for Kyrie and Asuka to win those, those SmackDown women's titles. I, I, all means. The, the, the Iconics are just, they just haven't been shown and not, not productive. They're just not no, they, productive. They stink. It's not, it's not a good look. So we're going to get actual competent, really, really talented wrestlers as, as SmackDown women, as WWE women's champions. I'm all for that. Anyway, get it back to Becky and get back to Bailey and Alexa uh, for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Ultimately, I, I, in theory, this could go one of two ways. If Alexa wins, this is clearly going to be building towards Alexa versus Nikki and then Nikki winning from Alexa. Or Bailey wins and then we, we just keep it rolling with Bailey as champion, which I would actually rather prefer to see. I think Alexa, however, will win the title. I think it'll be because of Nikki. But I think Alexa will win the SmackDown Women's Championship. Although, even though I don't want to see that, I'd rather see Bailey as champion for now. But I think it'll be Alexa winning the title, and they build Alexa versus Nikki. Getting back to the dudes, Roman versus Drew, and I Four. think this will be. I think it'll be a physical match. I think it'll be better than WrestleMania. Ultimately, I think I think McIntyre. Eh, no, actually, I don't think McIntyre wins. I think Roman will win the match, even though I, I would like to see Drew win it. If Shane could beat Roman, you figure Drew could. But I ultimately think that that uh, really Drew did did the, uh, did the damage, quite honestly. But I think Roman will win and pretty much put this rivalry to bed. Thank goodness. I, I think we, we need to probably get Shane off TV uh, and just do away with it. And finally, we get the what well, I think will close the evening: the steel cage match, Kobe versus Dolph in the WWE Championship. I think it'll be better than what it was. Then, then again. The, the match in Jetta was not, then again, nothing in Jetta was really redeemable. I think this will be a productive match. Ultimately, I think Kofi's just a little bit too strong for Dolph. Kofi retains the WWE Championship. So that's really a look at WWE on the main roster. The NXT stuff that happened NXT UK featured a battle royal uh, for the number one contendership for, the, for Tony Storm's NXT UK Women's Championship. And the winner was Kaylee Ray. As, as she basically emerge from underneath the ring and we'll get the last elimination to, to eliminate Zion Brooks' side and get it done. So, Kaylee Ray's number one contender for Tony Storm's NXT Women's UK Championship. They set up for GYVs versus uh, Mustache Mountain. They're going to run it back from their great match in January. So, I'm all for that. Walter versus uh, Travis Banks will be next week for the NXT UK Championship. Imperium obviously now have four members as opposed to three, what it was last week. So, Actually, a highly entertaining match with Banks and Walter. So that was your main stuff for NXT. And, I, and Cashizono beat the Lucky in a, in a decent one-on-one -on -one match, which also, which also happened on NXT UK TV. Now to the NXT, where Undisputed Era came out. They set up a six-man tag with uh, Undisputed Era versus Velveteen, Velveteen Dream, Tyler Breeze, and Matt Riddle, which Undisputed Era would win thanks to Roddy pinning Velveteen off of the end of Harding. But and we, we're obviously they, they set up for uh for Io Shirai versus uh Shayna Baszler to steal cage match next week. They're gonna end, but I think the main thing that happened, the main special thing that happened this week with NXT was they had this breakout star tournament coming up this week, uh, coming up over the next few weeks, where the winner will get an opportunity at whatever championship they seek on the NXT brand, and. If I can load up these guys real quick, because I know I, cause I just had it. Yeah, I have it. Okay. Jordan Miles, which formerly ACH. Yes. BOA. Mm -hmm. Boa. What a fucking name that is. What yes. a name. It is, it is though. Um, Cameron Grimes, which is Trevor Way. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Swerve Scott, Shane Swer Swerve Strickland. Uh -huh. Dexter Plumas. Um, um, Sam, Sam Shaw, Sam Shaw, Bronson Reed, Jonah Rock, mm -hmm. Angel Garza, formerly known as Garza Jr. That's simple enough. Mm -hmm. And Joaquin Miles, DJZ. <laughs> so, 
so a lot of people from the Evolve scene, a lot of people from the indie scene that uh, obviously uh, pretty much everyone knows who ACH and Trevor Lee are. I think those are Jonah Rock is. Everyone knows who Shane Strickland is. Yep, yep. Sam Shaw was recently on Impact. Mm -hmm. Um, Garza Jr. is a luchador. Um, promising. It's, it's, this is going to be good. So this is the this is what they're calling the breakout tournament. And the matches are going to start next week. And the winner, as I said before, is going to get a championship opportunity against the champion of their, cho of their choosing, which in theory would either be Cole or Velveteen as, as it stands right now. Street Profits will face Forgotten Sons next week on NXT as well, but obviously the main event is going to be the steel cage match between the two women uh, for Shayna Baszler's NXT Women's Championship uh, coming up this week. Also, the other thing that happened, Raul Mendoza versus Damian Priest. Raul Mendoza actually tried. He actually put up a pretty good fight here. Damian Priest was just way too strong and too big. Damian Priest looks like a player in NXT. I'm all for this. I think Damian Priest could be a could be. Too because he's a buddy of mine. <laughs> Damian, Damian Priest looks like a player. I'm, I'm, I'm not even saying that because obviously he's a connect. But, but he looks like he could ball. I think he could be very nice in NXT. I think there's, there's a bright future here with Damian Priest. He looked composed. He, he looked like he, he absolutely knew what he was doing. He was getting it in. He had, had, some, had some solid moves involved. I like it. I think it's a, it's going to be a good look for Damian Priest in the NXT. He's, he's going to handle it. I think I think he'll be just fine. So that's really your look at WWE. And then the oh, did you do the six man tag? Yeah, the six man tag. Um, yeah, before we, uh, I kind of go into it a little bit further. Uh, the six man tag with Velveteen Breeze and. Uh, Velveteen Breeze and Matt Riddle versus three fourths the undisputed era. The one that wasn't involved was Kyle Riley. And ultimately, the match turned when Breeze was get was starting to get hot. Velveteen tagged himself in and completely threw off the timing of, of the team. Roddy Strong basically need Breeze into Velveteen, and he hit Velveteen with the end of heartache to get the pin. So it's clear that Roddy is throwing his hat into the. North American Championship picture as he just pinned the North American Champion. So in theory, Roddy Strong is going to be in the discussion, if not getting a title shot at Velveteen. As Undisputed Era is clearly trying to build towards a situation where they have all the gold on NXT. We'll be right back with two matches from our greatest match ever. Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. And we're back. We are back. Powerslam.tv. I keep saying this every week. Obviously, I'm, I'm in school right now, but obviously it's a summer vacation. This is a good way to spend it, is to go on Power Slam TV hours and hours and hours, 3,000 of them, I believe they described on the uh, on the commercial that we, you just heard, where you can go back and watch great wrestling and go back and watch shoot promos. And it's at a really good affordable price. So if you're kind of bored with WWE, I know D Coots is, so you can go check out Power Slam TV. You get a whole uh, different alternative to what's going on in the world of wrestling. Yes. And we have two matches in store for our greatest match ever. Mm -hmm. um, we have Terry and Dory Funk versus Dan Hansen and Terry Gordy from All Japan in 1983. And then Hijo Del Santo versus Espanto Jr. in Mask vs. Mask. Since we go in order, um, I think let me see which match was first <laughs> because I forget these thing, things while I pull that up. Um, well, so while he's doing that, we should also send our condolences to Adrian Lionheart McCallum, who was the yeah. ICW World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, it, it was devastating to, to hear the, in the wrestling community a whole lot of people, Nikki Cross, and a whole lot of people. Uh, showed their love to Lionheart. Rest in peace to him. Uh, he passed away earlier this this week uh, as ICW World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, he's a he's a British wrestler. He was involved in WWE at points in times. 
And apparently he was a big, big piece uh, for a lot of people. Matt Hardy showed his love. Uh, so showed his love to him. I, I mentioned Nikki Cross showed his love to him. Davey Boy Smith uh, showed some love. Uh, a whole lot of wrestlers came together to kind of show their uh, show their respects to Lionheart. So rest in peace to him. Our condolences here from everyone to get in the ring, from, all, from both of us to get in the ring. Our condolences to him and his family. So we'll be watching Hanson and Gordy versus Funk, the Funks first. Okay. All right. Now this this comes from All August. Japan. Is this from August 31st or is this from August 17th, 1983? There's several, there's several numbers here. But uh, but anyway, let's just get into it. This is this oh, one. sorry, sorry. It's from August 31st. Okay, August 31st, um, 1983. Cool. Three, two, one, go. So basically what we're seeing here is this crowd is relatively hot right now. Let me turn this down. <laughs> And this crowd is hot. As we see the Funks uh, get in the ring here. No, that's Hanson and Gordy. That's Hanson and, Hanson and Gordy, sorry. Yeah, the Funks are already in the ring. You're right. Uh, and Hanson and Gordy are both wearing the cowboy. They're wearing the cowboy hats, we, we should mention. And they're here. in the long pants. Terry and Dory Funk are in the – Terry's in the red, Dory's in the blue. As opposed to <clears> – <throat> on the opposite team – We've got, I believe that's Hanson in the white cowboy hat? Yes. Yes. Hanson in the white cowboy hat, and we have, uh, and he's got the black, he's got black long trunks. Actually, no, they, they're both, they are wearing, um, okay, I, I see what I see that was. Those were chaps at, uh, that Hanson and Funk, that Hanson and uh, Gordy were wearing. But, uh, but Hanson is in the black trunks. And Gordy is in the and then there's streamers flying everywhere. And they're not even waiting for the streamers to be cleared out. <laughs> we got the, oh, the fight's wow. already started. The fight's already started. And and Gordy didn't have Gordy's his chaps off. Chaps. Gordy's still in the chaps. And they're, they're, they are rumbling right now. It is a serious oh, fight. Yeah, this is the kind of funk match I like. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a tech, it's not a tech showcase like last week's funk match, but this this is a this is going to be a brawl. This is going to be an absolute brawl, which, which is way what we expect from the Funks. So, basically, Gordy and Terry Funk... No, that's Hanson. I'm sorry. Hanson and uh, Dory Funk. Terry. Oh, that's Terry. I, I had it right the first time. Uh, so, so, Terry and... <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a massive brawl. Terry and Gordy are, 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 are rumbling, and then Stan and Dory are rumbling. It, it, it's... The match has actually kind of started. Dan, oh. going for the lariat. No. Yeah, yeah, he, he knew what was coming. He, he knew what was coming. Did uh? They call Stan Hansen the lariat for for a reason. You want to avoid that lariat. Also, look at the stitches. Look at the stitches on, on the on the head here. Uh, Stan oh, Hansen Terry. is taking of Terry Funk. Terry Funk clearly was in a, in a rumble before this. And he's got stitches all over the, the top of his forehead. He just took a chop or two, and he's just eating it right now. Stan Hansen laying it in on him, though. All right, we, we get the tag in. Gordy comes in. They're, they're ripping out the stitches. Gordy. You, you can kind of see the... Oh. Uh. And Hansen falls back. Yeah, the, yeah the Terry the tag in his, uh, his partner, Dory. His brother, Dory. His, his brother, I should say. He, he did tagging his brother, so that's that's a uh, as Terry's trying to calm him down. Hanson wants none of that, so Hanson goes after Dory. And now Hanson tagging in Gordy. Gordy with a nice elbow to the arm of Dory Funk. This crowd's so hot. It, this crowd is nuclear hot. It really is. Nice drop kick, solid drop kick right there. By Gordy and the kick out by Dory. But going to the arm. Kind of like what happened last week. Offense to the arm. Hanson back in the ring. Hanson going back to work. He picks up right where his partner Gordy left off, going after that left arm of Dory Funk. The referee gets him off the rope, gets a clean break. 
But the wrist control and the arm control, very evident here. Quick tags in and out. Smart tag team wrestling by Gordy and Hanson. The, the, the former is in the ring right now. Solid. solid. Applying more pressure to the arm. As all, as all parties look on, another quick tag. As they're, they're neutral, and it's smart to obviously do what we basic classic tag team wrestling. You're neutralizing your opponent, keeping them away from his corner. Smart decisions here. Even more pressure as the arm is locked in. As <laughs> Dory Funk trying his hardest to break this up. And he gets a whip. It gets kicked kick to that. Kicked in the head and a solid elbow drop. No hook in the leg, but he wasn't going to get pinned off that anyway. There's a kick out of one. But again, back to the arm. Even more to the arm and another quick tag in. Gordy coming back in. Elbow to the arm. So we are getting. Ooh, nice right hand. Nice right hand. Nice punch. Two of them. Nice punch. He's throwing, he's throwing a mean right, but he, he can't get, but he's stuck in the middle of the ring. And Terry Funk with a distraction, but that really did nothing to stop the momentum of Terry Gordy. Hope Terry's in red. Quite a thing right now. The Dory Funk is, is trying his hardest to get out. But again, the arm control. And another quick tag. To the second rope. In theory, it's an elbow. Indeed, it is. Elbow to the arm. And just wow. going, to, going to work. Meanwhile, while the arm is the focus of the hold, the knee being on the, the, the chin does not help. Uh, the case of Dory Funk. That elbow, however, does help. So does that one. Also, the kick to the gut. And a nice uppercut as well. Good combo. Dory Funk throwing hands. More uppercuts. But then a body slam shuts down that momentum that he had. Uh, Solid momentum. Ultimately, this uh, this is great tag team wrestling here by Hanson and Gordy to keep Dory yeah. away from the wild man known as Terry Funk, who is itching to get in the ring to help out, A, to help out his brother, and B, just to beat people up. Because that's what Terry Funk does. Yeah, I, I might have that reversed, but yeah, legitimately, those are the, he's dying to get in the ring right now. As off the ropes, come, nice shoulder tackle, but unfortunately, it knocked the wind out of, <laughs> it knocked the wind out of him. Uh, what Gordy a with bump shoulder, there. Yeah, so <laughs> Gordy with a shoulder tackle, but basically knocked the wind out of himself. Smart rest. Oh, that uh, did not work out. Hanson got in the ring to distract the ref, but Terry Funk, as you just mentioned, is kind of is kind of a wild man. Basically, got in the ring to, to not help out his brother get to the corner, but basically got in the ring to stomp out Gordy, which that did no favors for his brother Dory. As I believe there was a tag by Hanson, double team back elbows, oh, wow, wow. and then Hanson with a nice knee drop. Hanson going for the pin, the kick out. And now it's going for a pile driver is Hanson. Got it. Ouch. Yep. And it was a clean one too. And he follows it up with a knee drop and now has the knee into the neck, though he is holding the rope, so he's gonna have to break that hole there. And, and, and Terry Funk, as you can see, Terry Funk's not even getting in the ring to beat people up. He's, he's just heated. Meanwhile, the ref is focused awesome. on Funk. This is awesome. Focus, the ref is focus, focused on Funk and Hanson. He never saw Gordy and, and he never saw Gordy and Dory Funk. Uh, it was on the opposite side. And uh, Dory basically, basically gave him a second win. And he's throwing uppercut after uppercut. Nice, oh, nice roll through. Roll. Nice roll through by Hanson. To roll Dory back to his corner of the ring, that was that was really really smart. It looked like Dory was getting his, just gaining momentum, and then great move by Hanson. But Gordy off the ropes runs into a back elbow. 
And now we got a golden opportunity for Dory to get to Terry. Hanson's Hanson tagged in. And Terry just tagged in. And now getting tagged is Terry, but it's having no effect. Hanson's laid in some laid in four straight right. right hands. Just straight right hands? Oh! He laid in four of them, and it, it didn't affect Terry at all. And now Terry is starting to come back with right hands of his own. Oh, the blood. Nice clothesline. That, that cup, that, those stitches were opened up. And you can see, yeah, those stitches are opened up as the streamer flies in the ring. Those stitches, that, that's, those, uh, the wound that was sealed shut over the left eye of Terry Funk is now open. And Stan is biting at it. Ooh, look, look at it. He's biting, he's biting the, the, the wound. Now he has him in a side of lock, it's, which is counted to a back suplex. Terry Funk's legitimately been in the ring 90 seconds. But yeah, look, oh wow, the blood is the blood is very, very severe. Nice elbow drop by Terry, by Terry though. Nice elbow drop, make it twice. Kick to the to the shit, to the back of the leg. Kick to the both backs of legs. Kick to the hamstrings. And down goes Terry. As Hansen now has the better of this situation. As instead of going for the arm like he did Dory, he's now going for the legs of Terry. And Hansen. Is is he's got he's got the heel, he's got the, the the foot locked in, and that elbow to the back of the, le- the side of the leg. Funk is trying to counter it to look look like a sleeper hold. He's just doing anything he can to break the grip of Hanson, who has the leg scissored. And he was biting him. He was biting him. He absolutely was. And I think. He, ooh, look at the. Is that a cut over Hanson's eye? It, yeah. It, 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 it's, yeah, he caused blood there. And it don't look good. Meanwhile, there was a tag. And outside of the ring, ooh, that was nice. Okay, that's actually legit dope. So Gordy was holding the top of the leg as I think uh, Dory Funk just got drilled by Hanson. Gordy was holding the top of Funk's leg on the top turnbuckle from the outside, which allowed a free shot by Hanson to elbow the kneecap. As it's clear they're going after the knees of Funk. Look at all that blood Funk is losing. And, and it's, again, going to the leg. Keeping track of the, the leg. The referee's like, no, don't. The, the referee's trying to, not trying as hard as he should to probably stop the outside interference by the illegal man, Gordy, while Hanson is just going to town on the knees and the legs of Funk. Another tag causes... Now, Gordy, to be in the ring with Terry, Terry's all but on one leg and still throwing some solid jabs. Ooh, that was a nice right hand. That was a nice left. That was a nice left hand. And then Gordy back into the ring and kicks him right in the back of the leg. Oh, Hanson. Uh, Hanson, I'm sorry. Hanson back in the ring. Gordy's still in the ring. Uh, Hanson came back in the ring illegally to kick him right in the back of the leg. And now Hanson goes back to work on the leg, on the leg of Funk. Funk was basically all on one leg at the moment in time. Now we see both men in red, and the figure four is about to be locked in on Terry by Gordy. Nope. Funk, Funk finds a way out. He doesn't have the hold completely locked in. A it's, good tag wrestling. It was, good, it, was a, it was a good tag by Hanson to basically stop the tag from Terry to Dory. Dory needs to get in the ring now. And does. Nice drop kick. Solid oh, drop kick. nice drop kick. Dory going to work, but then Dory kicks Hanson into his corner, and now Gordy gets drop kicks. Make it twice. Dory in the ring now. Off the ropes goes Dory Funk. Shoulder tackle. Goes off the ropes again. Makes it twice. Goes off the, goes off the corner. Nope. Nope. Gets countered. Power got slam. Countered. Good power slam. Terry, still, who's still in the ring. Terry never got out of the ring. He was just never involved in the action. But breaks up the count. Side headlock, back suplex by Dory Funk. Looks like Dory's on relatively fine. Was there a tag? I think Dory just Dory got kneed right outside of the ring by Hanson. Hanson now stomping away at Terry. Dory now pulling Hanson. Wow, this is just. This is just a hockey fight. It really is all but a hockey fight. It is a draft tomorrow, by the way. But this is a hockey fight. So we got Terry 
and Gord, both Terry's are in the ring, and we've got Robbie Jansen outside of the ring. <laughs> we've got mass chaos all over the place. Terry can't stand up, but he did roll out of the way of what looked like it was going to be a diving headbutt. Meanwhile, Hanson and Dory are on the outside of the ring. Hanson just shoved Dory into the post. Terry going to the top. Sunset flip. Beautiful sunset flip. Beautiful. And he got the pin off of it, too. I think a little more is going to happen. He got the pin off of it, too. So, yeah. So, the match is the match. Like, no. The Funks win the match. That's not the point. <laughs> but now, there's even more drama happening afterwards. Stan Hanson is snapping. On Terry, who's still a bloody mess and is still holding his knee. Hanson's going to work and, and people are trying to stop him. And, and Stan All the young boys are trying to stop Stan Hanson. You're He's not having... stopping Stan Hanson. Oh, what a Larry. Oh, <laughs> get wrecked <laughs> right off that Larry. You, you, we figured we'd see it, but we, I think it'd be a young boy that would get it. And all the other young boys, there's two of them going to the one that just got wrecked off of Larry by Hanson. And all the other ones are going to the one that, that just got dropped. The Funks win the match. This is just, this is just chaos. <laughs> the, the Funks win the match, and, and pretty, pretty much every young boy available that's not currently unconscious went at their hands to keep them away from everyone else. Then a bunch, a couple of them did go to the young boy that just got rocked. Terry wins the match. He doesn't look like a winner, but Terry did get the pin by pinning Gordy off a sunset flip. That was fantastic. It was highly entertaining. It really was. He's still selling the knee. He's, he absolutely still selling the knee. He's like, get the fuck over me, ref. Terry Funk's trying to get up. This year is still being thrown into the ring. And the ring announcer, I think, is, no, the, the, I think a Ritzike Doctor looks like. Yeah, Ritzike Doctor looks like he's in the ring. Uh, tending, trying to get to Terry. Terry's trying to get up. It looks like he's going to be able to with the help of his brother and the ref. That was quite a... That was, not only was the, the finish nice, the post stuff was, was also highly entertaining. Terry Funk is in so much pain right now. He's losing a bunch of blood because the that cup was opened up. And his knee is is not is it looked like his right knee not not in good shape right now. He's no, trying to stand on it. This is just compelling. Yeah. Oh no, there's a fracas. It really is compelling stuff. It really is compelling entertaining television here. Funk is trying to get up, and yeah, it is. It is just chaos. It's. Just chaos everywhere. It's just enjoyable. So you see the blood on the hands, uh, on the taped up wrists of the Funk. The match it, itself was zone. short, but it was freaking awesome. It was entertaining for what it was. Physicality, as you would expect from these four. Especially Funk and Hanson. I mean, we, we figured that, okay, we're, we're going to get a lariat, but I didn't think it'd be the young boy that would eat it. it was, that, that was quite a thing. Ooh, that was, that, was, that was quite hilarious. As the lights go out in the in the arena, streamers are still being are flying into the ring. Still, the flash bulbs are going off. This is nineteen eighty three, after all. Terry Funk is cutting a promo now. <laughs> He's cutting. Funk is cutting a promo. <laughs> He's cutting a promo on one good leg and, and a badly cut up. This, this screams Rocky moment. It, it really does. Forever! Forever! It, it, this is basically screaming that. It, it's, it's like... Funk is basically screaming into the microphone. The streamers are flying into the ring. And Terry Funk is sweating buckets. And is cutting, is cutting a nice promo. As the fans are just losing it. He's still got a bad cut over, over his left eye. Showing love to the people who showed up. That was fantastic. That was actually highly entertaining. I genuinely enjoyed that. Just Terry Funk just, be the, just being a madman. <laughs> Terry Funk is a crazy, crazy individual. 
crazy individual. So the uh, folks in the ring, I believe that'll uh, pretty much do it for this particular match. And we move on to something t- entirely different. <laughs> I would think. Mass versus mass matches are brawls, but not a, not as bloody. But we don't know. Well, I don't know about this match. El Hijo del Santo, one of the biggest stars of Mexican wrestling history, versus Espanto Jr. Mask versus mask. Um, 831, 1986. All right, so let's talk about Let's get ready to go. This is three years later. Three, two, one. So, both wrestlers are in the ring. I know Santo is in the gray. Santo in the gray. Esparto, Espanto Jr. is in the black and gray. Black and white. Oh, black and white, right. Black and white. And so, so that's an easy way to tell which mask is who. Uh, Del Santo is in the, in the gray mask with the... What looks like he's got a cape on right now, but obviously he's not going to have it on in, the, in a few moments. And Espanto is in the black and white mask. So. This is obviously a rip from a tape. Right. Ah, VHS. Back when you were a real thing. Now, now we download stuff. That's a nice white suit on, on the ring announcer, by the way. Yes, it is. <laughs> The crowd, as we mentioned in the previous match, is also pretty hot for this one. Now, Del Santos, the back of his mask looks like he's got some shiny stuff. Looks like he's got some diamonds or something on the back of it, which is also a nice touch. He also had diamonds on the cape, it looked like. Long tights are on pretty much the whole... He's got a little singlet on, does a sponto with, with long tights. And... I can know they both have long tights on. It's just, there's no top on uh, oh, Del Santo. Yeah, the, Del Santo is not wearing a top. That's, that's really the, the main difference here. As, and also the colors. So, match yeah, begins. And we get a collar elbow tie up to start the match. And a standoff. We're going to sec- a uh, second. Back to back standing switches and a side headlock. Nice. Nice uh, offensive move there by Espanto. But nothing really results of it. A sponsor then whips the arm as suddenly it freezes. Okay, sure. Okay, cuts back on. We're good. We're good. <laughs> and yet, obviously, this is coming from VHS, so it's, it's a little uh, it's a little messy, a little choppy. Snapmare Takeover, however, by Espanto was not choppy. And he, he does yeah. it twice. And the, and the second one uh, caused a bounce from Del Santo. He makes it three times, and that one actually was more severe than the first two. Irish whip. Irish whip, fireman's carry, into what effectively would kind of be known as wasteland now, but that's effectively what happened here. So the outside area, there's a concrete, uh, it's concrete floor, and there's no barricade. And you got wow. people, oh, nice Irish whip into the, into the turnbuckle. As... Esparto is taking control. Esparto's taking control of the match to start with as he's Irish whipping him, turnbuckle to turnbuckle, and in a nice double uh, sledgehammer uh, move by Esparto. Oh, no. Nope, he's not, he's not by, he's just throwing him into the ring. He's just keeping up the offense so he can, I guess, continue to try to pin him. Irish whip. Um, nice. Fireman's carry to what looked like a little bit of a power slam type of deal. <clears throat> As all while it's all Esparto to start the match. As Esparto looks like he's going for the mask. Yeah, he's he's going for the mask right away. But he, but Del Santo is at the ropes. It was at the ropes. But yeah, yeah Esparto yeah. was going for the mask. He was absolutely going for the mask right away. Nice nice, yeah, nice arm drag. Leapfrog. Nice monkey flip. And hurt now, the arm. 
And as the Santos going to work, Santos is about to go to work and splat. Pop up and just basically lets him hit the ground and he lands right on his face on his nose in his face. <laughs> Ooh, good submission. I'm all for the submission by Esparto. Esponto. Esponto. And he wins the first fall. By submission. Probably should mention from the jump this was two out of three falls, but it's all right. It's, it's cool. It's cool. We pretty much know how this is going to go. It's probably going to be 1-1 one, one, and it gets to the third, but we'll see how this goes. Who knows? Maybe there's a sweep there. And at this rate, with the way offensively Esponto has been going, this could be a sweep. There's also... This is bare, This is incredibly bare bones. You, you can actually see under the ring, too. Uh, under this ring here. There's, there's, there's no like ring skirt or anything. As his corner man, as uh, Del Santo's corner man is, is kind of checking up on his guy, and it, it's not looking good for Del Santo. It, it really isn't. Del Santo gets up. Or he's trying to get up. He's getting up. He's trying to. It's not working so far. Your state quality is making me appreciate HD. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It, it's It's... We, we, we took it. Why well, like it at the same time because it's grimy as fuck? Yep. But it really makes you think. It really does make you think. Technology has really come a long way, hasn't it? Technology, you come a very long way since the days where this was standard <laughs> and where this was advanced. He's taking a little massage. <laughs> Dos Santos. He got basically destroyed in the first fall. He had a little bit of offense, but it got instantly snuffed out. Legitimately, this has been all Espanto, all Espanto in this uh, in this match. And Espanto really has done nothing to come out of the ring to come after Santo. He's basically just let, just let him recover, which is a little bit of a surprise. As we see a couple of kids walk up to Del Santo and, and sh- try to show some love. Spanto is... Yeah, he, he was out of it. He took a serious beating. He took, he took a serious beating in the first fall and is now... <laughs> I guess trying to collect his thoughts and compose himself. Quite honestly. Because if he loses one more, he loses his mask. Yep. Loses loses the mask and it look like his it look like kids, those kids come back. I don't know if they're related, I don't know if they're his children or anything, but they, they come back towards the area again. Remember that there's no barricade or anything, so they're pretty much there's a lot of kids in the front row, too. There's plenty of kids in the front row. So now the Santa comes back in the ring, and he immediately gets a snapmare. <laughs> he immediately gets a snapmare. Like, hi, welcome back. <laughs> hi, welcome back to the ring. That's a snapmare as a gift. And the Del Santa is driven back into the corner. Clearly, the emotional hook is, is on Del Santo. It, it, it's clear that the emotional hook, it, it seems like he's the good guy in, in, the, in this situation. As the crowd is clearly rallying around him to try to get back into this match. Nice. Kind of a, a rib breaker. A little bit of a back breaker deal. As Espanto is really going to work. He's, he's basically dominated this match. And is Del Santos just getting nothing done. Single leg Boston Crab? He doesn't have him completely turned over. He's got, he basically has a desired effect. He's not completely over top of him, but he is on his back. Oh, good counter by Del Santo. And a body slam shuts that down. And now... An interesting... It's an interesting submission hole. It's an interesting submission hole. Basically, Esparto is standing over his head, but is trapping the legs. 
And they and they're most back. So this could be a penny predicament. Watch the shoulders now. Two and a kick out. That's pretty much what it was. He was trying to cradle him. Nice. Kick to the gut. Kick to the midsection by Espanto, who's all but dominating this match. And basically going for the mask as, as part of it. That's how, that's how much he is trying to uh, dominate here. And the crowd's almost like in a riot. And the, the crowd gut wrench. Pretty much a gut wrench backdrop. As he all but he basically flipped him over on his head. Uh, did a Sparto. Sparto going for a neck breaker and he connects. And it's clear that the head is, is bothering Del Santo. As the rays are coming here in State College. But when it clearly when it rains, it pours, and the beating is is is, is coming in. Quite impressively, I should say, on Del Santo. Well, it feels like it's not done an offensive thing in the last few minutes. Right. Never mind the never mind the stuff that he, he was outside the ring trying to compose himself and come to grips that he's a fall away from losing the mask. But he, he really hasn't done much offensively. And oh, it's I like this submission hold. Look, look at this submission hole right here. So basically, Del Santo has hooked the leg. Look, he was going to go for a suplex, but he hooks the leg and basically stretches his, rears his arms back, the arms back of Del Santo. Back body drop by Esparto. Esparto had that submission hold, by the way. I think I might have said Del Santo twice. Back off the ropes. It looked like another back drop happened. Now he's going for the mask. He's coming for the mask. He's trying to unmask him before the match ends. The referee doing his, trying his hardest to stop it. But Del Santo rolls out of the ring to try to get some leverage and rips part of and the mask. Part of it is ripped off. You can kind of see the right. face. You can kind of see his face. But he's making sure he can't. You make it, yeah. He, he's, the right side of his mask is basically exposed. But it may be a matter at this rate, it may be a matter of time. Ooh, nice. He basically just runs right through a Sparto. A Sparto runs right what? through. Is, is, and now Del Santo is starting to go to work. Back body drop. The crowd's starting to get a little hot right now. Maybe that's what that maybe that's what he needed. Maybe that's what he needed to get back in it. Another back body drop. Maybe that's what he needed to get right. As he's starting to take, he's starting to take the offense. Oh, oh, that was nice. And he, the suicide dive. He went to work. That was that was nice. I got him out of the ring, though. He he basically kicked his leg. He basically kicked Osparto's leg out from under him. Osparto goes through the middle rope, and then following him is Del Santo. It's fun. Sponto's now in trouble as he just gets body slammed on the makeshift padding on the concrete floor. The crowd is now gathering around the situation. As getting... nice senton. Mm. Oh no. Dolls. Hooks the hooks both legs. And gets the pin. So it's 1-1 after a flurry of offense by Del Santo. By El, by El, Hio Del El Santo. Hio Del Santo. So now it comes down to this. We've got one fall to go. One mask is already halfway off. Uh, the other mask is fully on, but now both masks are fall away from being removed. As we see the trainer or the Esponto. Uh, Esponto's trainer or connect, similar to how to Del Santos did after the first fall, tending to the loser. Of the fall. 
Yeah, except for the yeah, right, except for they're in the ring still. As both trainers on our uh, as the camera's now on Del Santos trainer. And he, he's kind of giving advice. Well, Spartos trainers in the ring with the wrestler. And it's now a matter. It's all come down to this pretty much. Is both both parties are getting a little bit of a rest. As after the beating, it makes you wonder. As look like the mask is mostly back on, mostly on. I mean, you could you could definitely see the hair. You could definitely see the hair on Del Santo. He's looking okay. He looks like he's going to be able to continue to go to work here. As the camera zooms in on him. You can kind of see the ears covered up with part of the mask, which is not, not a bad thing. It's kind of got the whole chrome deal going on. He's waiting to get this third fall started. It started. And it begins. The third fall begins. Bulldog. It's a solid one, too. A solid bulldog there. Coming out of the corner as the the feed froze. Yeah. And it comes back. Yep. There it is. The feed froze a little bit, but now we're back on. There, there was no fall. There it's was not a stream. It's the tape. But going, going for another bulldog? No, this time we got countered. <clears throat> this time the Sparto countered and basically threw Del Santo towards the opposite side of the ring, Snapmare, and gets right back out, Snapmare out of the ring. And this time, Esparto, sensing the urgency, and I don't blame him, went right out of the ring, stares the trainer in the eye, and then runs him into the post. Runs Del Santo into the post. Oh! He took it. Esparto took a chair from the audience and smacked Del Santo in the head with it twice. Santa was down, and he's currently out. As Asparto is doing the right thing by shoving him back into the ring. He caught him clean in the head with those chair shots, too. Down there, takedown. Going for... He's either going for the mask or sleeper, and he might be doing both. He's still trying to rip the mask off. He's still he's still trying his hardest to rip the mask off. And now he's biting at him. Biting and punching and he's trying hard to rip the mask off and get and get these right hands in. Still going for the head. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely biting him. And it's raining in right hands, raining in right hands to the top of the head. But there's no submission here. There, there's no quit in Del Santo. There's no quit in Del Santo. Unfortunately, his body may give out first. He's, he's just he's like, yeah, cannibal or something? He's, he's just biting at him repeatedly. I think as the feed freezes again, but he is, Espondo is basically biting at him for the last two, three minutes. I didn't see it first. And we're back on now. Another takeover. He, he, he's basically trying to destroy the mask at this point. Oh, and there, there is blood. Oh, oh, he's, he's, he's getting somewhere. You can see the top of his head. You can see the top of the head of Del Santo. And he's, he's definitely bleeding, bleeding from the bites. Body slam. Senton. Del Santo is in deep, deep trouble if he already wasn't. Oh, misses the second one. 
Can Can Del Santo have another? Does he have another flurry of offense left in him? And now he's going for El Spartos mask. Okay, turn about fair play. And he is all fans love and war. Yeah, it is. And and certainly, I think El Santo is. Is busted open. Del Santo absolutely is busted open. Yes, he is. He, he de- because of the biting. That's what he, and that explains what um he literally bit him enough to bust him open. He, well, he was in a different sense than the first match. Mm-hmm. Oh, now it's Bonzo's probably going to be busted open. Yeah, no, he, yeah, I would have to think so. Because again, part of his mask is ripped too. So that, that was not mask that hit the post. It was that was his head. That was certainly like the the un, uh, exposed head. His mask is now ripped semi-open. This match has gone incredibly awesome. It, it's gotten progressively violent as the top of Espando's Aspar- head hits the post. As he's on the apron and Del Santo's in the ring. And that's all steel right there. It is. And, and meanwhile, one of the parts that keeps the turnbuckles up is now meeting the head of Espanto. And they're having a close conversation. And I don't think anyone likes it. Oh, he's, he's basically kneeing him. He's basically ramming his head into the support of the turnbuckle. It, it, it's it's a dark lit arena, so you, you can't necessarily tell until they stare into the light. But I have to think that the spot does bust it open just as well. You have to think so. Both parties' masks are kind of ripped to the point where you can see the top of their heads. One. Oh. Oh, nice sunset flip. And a kick out. Del Santo kicked out of a nice sunset flip counter oh, by Sparjo. Over. One, two. One, and nice kick out. And they're just exhausted. They are. Even with the two rest periods between the two falls, both guys are, are oh, absolutely wow. beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> And a kick out after all that energy that they both guys have expended in the, during this match. Nice drop kick. He's the going Santa, to work. A Sparta with a Sparta with a drop kick. He's going to work. So it's a Cena. Hey, oh wow, he's busted wide open. Ooh, his cut is a whole lot worse than Dos Santos is. His cut is much worse, probably because of the ramming into the into the uh, the support beam of the turnbuckle. Made it made his a whole lot worse. That look, that looks that's a nasty nasty gash. The crowd is super hot for this right now. Nice diving shoulder block, or diving double axe hand, I should say. As oof, that was a thud. Did you hear that thud? Until Santos gonna go to work. Diving looked like a diving crossbody. The feet kind of jumbled up, but looked like a diving crossbody. As this feed is, it really does. It Sorry. really doesn't make you take for it. Really doesn't. It really puts in this perspective how good HD is, or how how good technology currently is now. Now he's going up to the uh, but Sponto. Sponto go is going to the top rope. And El Santo gets out of the way. It El looked Rio. like it was going to be a splash. The cover. A two. And a kick out. <laughs> going for the camel clutch. Going for that camel clutch. The referee's like, do you give up? And and they're still getting a no from Espanto. Espanto not giving up. He waved. He did give up. Yep. Espano, get, uh, Espano verbally gave up and lost by submission. That was a fantastic brawl. It was. Picked up the third fall. He got the third fall by submission. So I'm saying Sano- that picked up after Oh, yeah, sure did. Absolutely did. It, it absolutely picked up on fall three. After the beating that Dos Santo took in the first fall, it's amazing that he came back with a flurry in the second and the third. 
One so, of my favorite things about the match was the little kid sort of. Yeah. Like, kind of bringing an emotional aspect. I don't know if they were his kids, but it, it, bringing an emotional aspect into it. Where they were like, no, like, we, we can't, like, they don't, like, you, you can do this. You can still win. There's blood everywhere in the ring, by the way. You, you, you could, like, you can still win. You can st still get this done. As is, uh, as Asanto's cutting a promo at the end of the match, his mask is still fully, mostly fully on his head. It is semi ripped, yes, but there's a lot of his mask is still relatively on his head. But the mask will certainly be cutting off, will be coming off of a sponto. Well, part of it already is. So let's see what we got here. <laughs> He's basically getting interviewed. He's not getting a promo. He's basically getting interviewed by newspapers. And a reporter. And he, he took a heavy beating, especially in the first fall. But he took a heavy beating. And it's come together quite nicely to finish the deal. And now they're going towards the loser of the match. That gash is very deep. Look, look, look at that gash. The guy has to take the mask off anyway, so. He does, but they're trying to, I think, seal open, uh, seal closed the wound that's in the top of his head. Blood pouring everywhere out of there. He must be in pain, too. He, yeah. Look how deep that blood came out of that towel. So the referee, okay, he is removing the mask. The referee was trying to help him. As everybody is gathered around the ring, the referee is removing the mask. Everyone's gathered around the ring to see what he looks like. And Espanto is getting up on his own. He's basically waving the referee off like, I, I got this, I'll remove it. Honorable thing to do. Espanto is now at the ring ropes. Now he's, he's up on his own. All parties involved are trying to remove the mask. And... Sponto's untying it. He's trying. He's barely able to stand, but he's still able to untie it. And here, here come off comes the masks. There it is. And he's been unmasked. So next week, we are going to 1952. Luthez versus Vern Gagne. Mm. For the NWA World Championship, Chicago 125, 1952. Nice, nice. Obviously, we'll also be talking about the stomping grounds. And that fallout, we'll be previewing the uh, the show the next AEW show, which you talked about earlier, Big Three. Power versus Daisuke Ikeda mm -hmm. from Futen, 424.05. Nice, nice. There's still a jam packed show coming up next week. It's, it's going to be, it should be a very, we'll see what Sami Grounds actually turns out to be. I, I have no idea how good or bad this show could potentially be. We'll see how this turns out. So, got anything else we're going to cover this week? No. Okay. Plug, plug. We have a new Twitter account. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, we should totally plug that. Uh, G I T R Wrestle is our show Twitter account. We'll do some live tweeting. Um, but you can follow our personal Twitter accounts for more wrestling stuff. At DJ D. Cook's Razzle, at Peace of Mike. Yes. So, as for me, I will be board hopping if there is a game, or will there be games? I've been doing that for the State College Spikes. I'm basically a producer there. 
And uh, I'm basically a producer there. At, it's in State College, uh, the radio station, so I'll be board hopping there. Uh, today's doubleheader, the spikes have been pretty good so far. If there is a game, because it's been raining over the last couple of uh, last few minutes, it may open up, it may not. We'll see. But I'll, I'll be down there to see what happens. So that'll be a lot of what I do. You put uh, up away uh, games too. Yeah, I, I do the I do the away games as well. A lot of them. Uh, I'll be pretty much there. I won't be there tomorrow, but I'm going to be there today, and then I'll be there Saturday and Sunday as well. But I'm I'm going to do a lot of the I'm going to do a lot of the board hopping uh, for the Spikes games, home and away. Oh, so you're going to be actually at the station? Not- yes. Yeah, I'll be at the station. I'll be I'll be at the radio station. Uh, pretty much running the board hopping and doing the editing, similar to what I do with this, where like I, I do like the editing and uh, running and running the boards, things like that. Making sure everybody stay, making sure everyone's cool uh, and, and up there. I actually just met Seth, uh I actually just met Steve Jones, who does the Penn State football. Like, I, I met him on Monday. He actually came in the studio. Not too happy that I'm a Dolphins fan, but he, he's a Giants fan. He doesn't like how the picks are gone. Joe Putman's a Steeler fan. He's guys does the hockey. He's the other one that does the, the broadcasting. But yeah, but I'll be there making sure they, they sound good, they sound clear, uh, and, make, and seeing if there's going to be some baseball later today. So for Beast Mike, this is DJD Kooks, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>